Controversy over raves back in the news. 15-year-old girl who died after a rave at the L.A. Coliseum prompted legislation to protect people at large events on state property. Young people texting each other or emailing and showing up at this clandestine site doing a lot of ecstasy. I think politics was very interested in it and the media was very interested in it because you could attach it to kind of a scene or a group or a population of people that you could you know, either demonize or criticize. The Electric Daisy Carnival, or EDC, is a giant festival of electronic music, dancing, and lights. In the city of angels, something special was born. Hundreds of thousands of people have attended EDC in Los Angeles for the past 13 years. But in 2010, a 15-year-old girl died at the event. An autopsy later showed ecstasy in her system. The tragedy led the Los Angeles City Council to ban Electric Daisy Carnival from the city and also prompted State Assembly Member Fiona Ma to craft AB 74, or Sasha's Law. She, you know, 14-year-old, had uh, many different types of drugs uh, in her system, so it was very, very alarming that um, young people of that age were going to um, these events. Ma's first impulse was to ban raves altogether, but that approach ran into some problems. We found out later on that constitutionally you cannot ban a type of music. Um, uh, plus, uh, um, I, uh, like my opponents said, you know, I, I didn't really know what was going on. Ma decided to better acquaint herself with raves by attending one in her district and found contrary to much of the hype, it was not an altogether terrifying and unpleasant experience. Not my style of music, but I can see how people have fun there. I, mean, I went to a rave in, in March and uh, was very surprised seeing 10,000 people in one location dancing to the same music at the same time, the same beat. It was pretty... Um, pretty eye-opening. How's music? She is still pushing AB 74, but it's been modified to simply regulate large events held on state fairgrounds, rather than targeting raves in particular. But Lee Lu, who worked for a rave safety organization called Dance Safe, and also was producing a documentary about the Electric Daisy Carnival, says that politicians in California and across the nation are still unfairly targeting ravers. When you kind of do a story about an out of control rock concert, it's almost like old news to a lot of people. But when you throw in some uh, colorful kids you know, at a rave, you know, that's like kind of fresh. So I think that's why people pay attention to it more. Much of the political backlash against raves began in 2002, when then-Senator Joe Biden proposed the Reducing Americans' Vulnerability to Ecstasy Act, or the Rave Act, which he attached to a popular bill targeting child abduction. Whenever public officials or legislators, uh, they try to push forward a bill or an issue, it's going to be an easier sell if you attach it to something having to do with children, because it sparks the protective nature of parents. Lou says that legislation targeting raves is not the best way to stop kids from overdosing on ecstasy. In fact, it drives the behavior underground. Some events even discourage groups like Dance Safe from participating in order to avoid the toxic rave label. Well, it's just created this atmosphere of fear to have any kind of discussion on drugs. It's just kind of encourages a setting of denial that, you know, an event is a rave or an event has any sort of drug use. So there's like a, there's like a separation between the people going to these events who mostly are using drugs and the people putting them on, just kind of pretending the drug use aspect of there doesn't exist. And I think that's what that's what's led to tragedies such as Sasha Rodriguez's. Of course, um, that will always happen. There's always loopholes. Um, as I mentioned, there's a lot of money uh, involved in these type of events. Uh, but I believe with the um, the new secretary, um, the new people appointed to these boards, uh, more sophistication in terms of what raves are. Uh, the safer they will be. Ma may be approaching the rave issue with a lighter touch now, but her push for regulation has still targeted specific aspects of rave culture, such as the use of LED gloves and pacifiers, which she says promotes drug use. You can't wear gloves with lights. You can't um, um, walk around with stuffed animals. I mean, all the things that the rave culture, the, the promoters have tried to break down and make it more like a concert where people go to a venue to enjoy themselves and not have all of the things that are associated traditionally in the past with raves. No pacifiers, for example. Nobody was allowed to, um, 
to have pacifiers in their mouth. When you're talking about politicians who kind of write laws or you know around events or cultures of young people, there's, there's always going to be a disconnect, you know, with feeling a Moz bill, especially now. There's been such a huge reaction from the uh, from young people from the rave community to say, well, this doesn't really make sense. Although Ma is working to regulate raves in her district, the city of Los Angeles outright banned the Electric Daisy Carnival. But the rave culture is still strong and vibrant, and it's found a more welcome home elsewhere. Las Vegas. I think it's best. People are more open about it. The mayor's more open about it. Vegas knows how to uh, keep madness and chaos organized to begin with, so I think they're doing a very good job. What do you think is the biggest misconception outsiders have about ravers? Misconception? We're all druggies. Yo, 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 yo. We're conducting an interview. <laughs>